Hey guys, Tammy here. And in this video, I want to talk about narcissistic supply. This is one of those terms that gets thrown around a lot, like some of the others I've been discussing recently. And what narcissistic supply is really the attention a narcissist gets from us. And so we're going to dig into why it's important to understand this. Now, if you like these videos, please don't forget to hit like and also subscribe so you get notified as new videos are released. So when we enter into a relationship with a narcissist, um, you know, if you're watching this video and you're starting to figure out what narcissism is and you're learning about all this kind of thing, um, what happens in the very beginning is usually that they're being very charismatic, right? They're on their best behavior. They're love bombing us. Everything is just really, really good. You know, Thomas used to say, when it's good, it's good, but when it's bad, it's bad, <laughs> right? And any high conflict personality, that is true. What happens is that they're being, you know, fantastic and, and giving us all this attention and everything. And so in return, we're being admiring and adoring and giving our attention and everything's just really, really great in those beginning stages. And so when we get to the end of the relationship and we start to cut off though, you know, our attention and, and the pieces of that relationship that were the admiring and the adoring and all that, we think that we've cut off the narcissistic supply. However, that's not always true. And the reason is because sometimes we have this inaccurate belief that narcissistic supply is positive attention. And that is not necessarily true. Narcissists can get supplies, supply, emotional supply from negative or positive interaction. And so when this is why it's hard to get out of the um, pattern, the cycle of behavior with them because we end the relationship. But if we're dealing with co-parenting issues and we have a child together, then this is somebody we have to continue to deal with, right? If, if we weren't married to this person or weren't, or didn't have a child with them and we could just cut the relationship off and not have any more interaction, then that would in fact cut off the narcissistic supply. But because you have co-parenting and custody issues with this person, you're not going to be able to have a clean break like that, unfortunately. But a lot of times we are continuing to give negative attention and we don't realize that that continues the supply. And so that's why the things like the boundaries and the things I've been talking about in the last few videos are so important because when you are not cutting off that supply, they're going to continue to it, try to engage in this relationship with you. And what happens many, many times is once I start to work with somebody and we do start to unravel why they're doing this and what the boundaries should be. And again, all the things that I've kind of been talking about in the last few videos, if you didn't hear some of those, you can go back and watch them. But the reason that this starts to become important is because when you do start to cut off that supply, let me tell you what's going to happen. They're going to get desperate for it. It's like cutting off someone's air, right? If someone was, was choking us and cutting off our air supply, we would be fighting, scratching, clawing, doing everything we could to get that air supply back, right? And so for a narcissist, this same type of thing happens because that supply feels like life or death to them. It's the way that they've learned to, you know, manage their world and to survive. And so it literally feels like life or death to them. So when we start to cut off that supply, they will increase their uh, pursuit of us, be that negative or positive. Sometimes that pursuit is trying to recover the relationship, right? Trying to engage in the love bombing and the different things that they did at the beginning of the relationship. And sometimes it's the negative aspect of it where they're still trying to manipulate and bully 
and uh, engage in those types of negative negative behaviors. But either way, they're trying to get their narcissistic supply met. And so when you start to cut it off, you're going to feel like it's not working. You're going to feel like, oh my goodness, they're just upping, 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 upping the ante. And yes, they are because when that supply gets cut off, they feel desperate. But I always say, if you can hold the line and you can make sure that that air stops coming from you, then what happens? Well, if my air is being cut off from one place and I have the alternative to, you know, breathe through my nose, let's say if somebody's choking me or I have the option, you know, my, my throat swelling because of some accident, but they can put a tube down and get air into me, whatever, we go for those alternative options, right? When it comes to air and, you know, I'm kind of using an extreme example, obviously, because I want you to really grasp the concept of this because again, they will get desperate and they will pull out all the stops to try to re-engage in that supply. But if we can hold off and sort of wait, then what happens is they start to find that somewhere else, right? They'll go to one of those other sources or find a new source that they need to find in order to be able to re-institute that supply from someone. It's really important that, um, that you, that you stick with this and that you really hold that boundary firm and wait it out or else you're going to be stuck in this continuous dynamic of being the person that is, giving them that supply. And, you know, the thing with, with that narcissistic supply is it's an unhealthy, um, dynamic in a relationship, right? And this usually comes from some sort of attachment disorder as a child where they didn't learn how to attach and have healthy, um, relationship skills and healthy boundaries because of either their caregiver or, or whatever things happened around them that created this situation for them where they just never learned to have that type of healthy dynamic or interaction. And so sometimes we get sucked back into the vortex because we believe that if we can just provide enough logic or provide enough reasoning <laughs> that this person will suddenly snap out of it and learn how to communicate in a healthy way. But you have to understand that this comes from most of the time childhood trauma and it's literally the only way they know to move through the world. And the statistics on somebody being able to change who are truly diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder are so, so low. I, I, I mean, it's just, it's almost zero. It's just practically zero people that are able to change it later in life when they've had this type of diagnosis. So the statistics are really grim. So, you know, if all of the professionals and the licensed therapists and, and psychiatrists and all these people in the world have not been able to change people who are diagnosed with this specific disorder, then what in the world makes us think that we're going to have some magic cure for somebody that's exhibiting these types of behaviors? We're not, unfortunately, because again, this is ingrained from trauma. And so unless they're willing to sit down and do all the work necessary to pull apart all that trauma, you know, unravel it, figure out why they do it, learn how to change the behavior patterns and all those different things, they're never going to get there. And most of them don't. The only thing that you can do is understand that this, you're not going to change this and there's nothing that you can do on your end except for protect yourself and make sure that you're modeling healthy behaviors, healthy boundaries, and healthy interactions for your child, because we don't want them to grow up to either be a narcissist or to be in a relationship with a narcissist, right? So this is real important. Um, This isn't just for you. This is for your kids too, so that, you know, you can make sure that you're protecting them as much as possible. So I would just encourage you to cut off that supply, 
Take a look at it. Make sure you're not engaging in the negative aspect of it because that is what happens most of the time in co-parenting issues with a narcissistic person. And really make sure you're cutting that off and holding your boundary and waiting out the rise in the effort to get you to engage and hold your line. If you would like to learn more about my coaching services, please go to Divorce University Online forward slash VIP dash coaching. You can book a free strategy session there and I'd love to talk to you and learn about uh, your story and how I might be able to support you. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>